Hey guys, it's Farmer J. Welcome. Today we're going to go over what I'm planting in my spring garden and kind of where I'm putting it, how I'm planting it. This could obviously change, but this has been the plan for a few weeks now. I feel like I've kind of got it figured out, so fingers crossed this works out. Also, I will be doing my absolute best to link to every Thing that I am planting so that you can go check it out if something sounds interesting to you. If I can't find it on the same place that I got it, I'll do my best to find it on another site so you can go check it out. So my husband built me these small raised beds. They're not very big. We've got a little area fenced off kind of by his, his office outside. And that is where a lot of these spring things are going to end up being planted. I don't use a lot of it for summer. Part of it's the garlic, the garlic beds. So not all of this will be ripped out and have something else put in over the summer, but some of it may be. I haven't quite figured out exactly where we're putting the summer garden things because um, we're we'll, we still working on that whole area and I should do a video about that because a lot of changes going on outside, <laughs> but we haven't gotten very far with it yet. Winter has kind of not been fun. It is very cold and wet, and we really don't want to be outside working in the cold and the wet. So, in some of these small boxes, I have a couple of them, and he's going to build me, I think, one more is what I asked for. We'll see if I stick to that. We're going to do this, and um, with every seed video, I think I say this, if I mispronounce something really terribly, forgive me, because... It's a thing. If you buy weird varieties of things, they have weird names that you can't always pronounce. So this is Rouge de Hever, Rouge de Hever lettuce. It is a really, really beautiful lettuce. I'm trying to get it to focus. It is a really, really beautiful lettuce. I felt like the colors were just amazing. And I want to try eating it and see how it tastes. So I'm going to be growing that in one of those small beds. And another one, we are going to be doing this um, Blue Curled Scotch. Kale. This I planted this autumn. I planted it a bit late. I did it for a blog post that I put off making probably two weeks too late for a friend's website. I will grab that blog post and I will post it in the description box below if you want to go check out what I did to grow this kale. Um, but despite the cool weather and things not being awesome, it has persevered through a lot of freezing and things and the little plants that we have, we pick off leaves occasionally when we're out there checking on stuff. It is delicious. It just, it tastes so good. And I know that kale is better if you allow it to go through some frosts. It sweetens it, but it is so, so, so good. And it's been a little, a little champ. So I'm really excited to grow some more of that. In the third little box, we're going to be doing this freckles romaine lettuce. There we go. Uh, we're going to be doing this freckles romaine lettuce. It sounded delicious. It looks really cool. It's got little speckles on it. I just thought it sounded really neat. So we're going to try that one out. Now in our soil bags, which I did a soil bag, and what I did is you take the bag and then I just cut holes in it. And I planted a type of lettuce in it and nothing germinated, like nothing germinated. So I don't know if I did something funky to it or the seeds just for whatever reason it was a bad pack. I haven't had that happen very often, but it does happen occasionally. So whatever it was did not come up, but I know that this method is completely legit and should work. So we're going to try it again. In that soil bag, we are going to do Tom Thumb lettuce and tennis ball lettuce. You guys can see them. So tennis ball lettuce is what I planted in it previously and it just did not come up. It just didn't. I'm not sure why. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do half of this and half of this. And if this just does not come up again, I may just toss it. Um, I may try to germinate some of these seeds just on a coffee filter. I, I don't drink coffee. The only reason I keep coffee filters in the house is to germinate seeds. But if you take a coffee filter and you get it just damp, not sopping, but damp, and you fold it and you put seeds on it and you put that in a plastic baggie and you keep it somewhere warm, it will germinate your seeds really quickly. It keeps them evenly moist. It's a great way to germinate seeds. I don't recommend it for lettuces that you're gonna plant because transplanting something that small kinda doesn't go well. Ask me how I know. But to check seed germination to see if they're viable, I feel like it's a great option. So 
before I plant these, I might actually do that, and if they end up not germinating, I may just do all of it with the Tom Thumb lettuce and not waste my time with the tennis ball. So if you watched one of my last couple videos, it was a little while ago, I showed you guys how to plant in a super, super inexpensive shopping sack you can get from Walmart or most grocery type stores. Um, I will put that um, maybe like on the end screen or maybe in the description box too so that you can check it out if you want to, but it is a super, super cheap method. It's I'm pretty much just soil cost. These bags cost less than a dollar. Really easy to use. You can move them around. They're great for planting on a balcony, a porch, if you don't have a lot of room, that kind of thing. I love them. We grew carrots in them this fall, and I currently have some kale that's overwintering in one of them that has done really well. So I love this method. It's really inexpensive and very versatile. So in those bags, I have two currently. No, I have three. I have three totes. <laughs> Um, I'm going to be buying a fourth. So, what we're going to do in that is mostly carrots. I really love them for carrots. I'm going to be doing these Parisian carrots. They look really, really cool, guys. Okay, my camera does not want to refocus. If I, if I refocus it, I pretty much have to get up and hit the button every time. So, I'm going to probably not give you close-ups of these. I'm sorry. Um, but Parisian carrots, they're littler and they're bigger around. And they just, I know, they just sound delicious. Like, you just pop them out and eat this little, this little handy piece of carrot. It just sounds great. So we're going to try this out. We're also going to be doing these. Here's one of those names, guys. Husa Rudira carrots. They're beautiful. They're this lovely red color and they just sounded amazing. They sounded just so good. So we're going to be trying those ones in the in one of those bags. And then we're also going to be doing the black nebula carrot. These carrots are so pretty like they just look gorgeous and if I'm not much mistaken yeah these ones it makes a stunning dark purple juice purple drink when juiced and when a squeeze of lemon is added it turns bright pink I'm assuming the acidity in the lemon um, has a chemical reaction and changes the purple to a pink but it sounds awesome I don't even have a juicer and, and I'm gonna find a way to make that happen I don't know how but we're gonna work on it so these ones <laughs> And then we're also going to grow thousand head kale. This kale gets huge. It can get just just massive. Um, okay, so it doesn't say on the back how big it actually gets, <laughs> but it said it on the website. It gets really big, and I had some of this planted this fall, and it was coming up and doing beautifully, and then we had a cold snap, and for whatever reason, it just didn't really come back from that. So I really want to try it again this spring, and hopefully we can get some. I think it'd be really cool to have really big kale leaves. So next is our fence trellis. We have, it's not exactly a trellis, but we're gonna use it as one. We have fencing around this little area right by my husband's office outside um, to keep the chickens and the cats out of it. And I may need to put another support right in the middle of it, but I'm going to be planting peas all along that fence on the long side of it. We are going to be doing these sugar snap peas. Um, they're just delicious. They're a really lovely treat. I don't plan on necessarily freezing them or anything like that, preserving them. We're probably gonna eat most of them fresh just as a nice addition to salads or whatever. We might throw a little bit in stir fry, but mostly the plan on this is just to eat them right off the vine. They just, they're yummy. If you've never grown these, they are so much better if you grow them than what you can get in the store. They are absolutely delicious and they're really good spring or autumn crop as long as you get them in quickly enough. But so we're gonna try these ones. So in the little cold frame that I made, um, the one that will have the blog post below that has kale in it. That kale, not all of it made it, just some of it is doing well, and so there's still plenty of space. So in that space, I'm going to be putting corn salad. It's a really neat sounding green. We've never had it before. Um, one of my kids thought it just sounded like he'd love to have it. He likes corn. I've explained this does not taste like corn. This has not deterred him from wanting to try this. So we're going to try out corn salad in that with that, the, the few kale plants that have made it. We'll probably leave those there because I think that they'll do totally fine over the spring. This brings us to our kiddie pools. Last year, my children had one of those plastic kiddie pools. You know, you can pick them up at like Walmart. They had one of those, you drill holes in the bottom, fill it with soil, and it works awesome. They don't have to deal with weeds. It just, it works great, especially for children. So my children shared one. <laughs> 
split it in four and they each had a little section. And this year they each get their own. They are so excited. But I have another one that I'm going to be using for radishes. And I have quite a variety of radishes five different kinds that I'm going to be trying in there. So I'm going to be hopefully succession planting. I might do like a third and then a week or so later, maybe two weeks later, plant that other third and just kind of keep rotating as much as I can through the cool season until we kind of run out of cool enough weather that they won't kind of get bitter. So the varieties that I'm going to be trying are this red Chinese meat radish. It kind of looks like a watermelon. Um, they just sound really cool, really delicious, something a little bit different. I'm super, super excited to try these. We're going to be doing this 18-day radish. It's, I think, the earliest radish you can get. It can take more than 18 days if your growing conditions are not ideal, but it comes up pretty quickly. It's a yummy little radish, really fun variety. Um, it's a little bit quicker for kids that are maybe younger and a little more impatient if you want to try something that they can grow and get excited about. Radishes can be kind of strong for children, raw, and so I highly recommend roasting your radishes just like you would roast potatoes or carrots or whatever. We slice them up, toss them in a little bit of oil, add salt, pepper, whatever seasonings we want, and you roast them in the oven until you can poke them with a fork and they're soft. And it takes kind of that strong bite out of it, and I find that that's way more palatable to a child who doesn't like that sharpness. Some kids are fine with it, but I know most of mine do not like raw radish, so that's what we're doing with our radishes. We're also doing this Malaga radish. It is the most beautiful deep purple. We grew some of these in Idaho. They are lovely, lovely radishes. Um, I don't think that they're as strong. Yeah, these are a little bit milder of a flavor, which is why I originally bought them because I knew that my kids wouldn't like a strong radish flavor. We're going to try these French breakfast radishes. I have heard so many things about these radishes. I believe Jess over at Roots and Refuge said these are her favorite. I know that Rose over at Wholesome Roots has had these and said that they're delicious. I've never had them before, but they look beautiful, right? Like you could just imagine going to like a Paris farmer farmer's market and picking up a bundle of these radishes and taking them home to cook. Like they just, I don't know. I don't know. They're beautiful. I want to try them out. And last but not least, these are Easter egg radishes. They um, come in a variety of colors. I think there's white, purple, pink, and red, I think, is the colors that they come in. But they're super cute. My kids are actually really excited about these. It's kind of, you just don't know what color is gonna come up. So that is our five radishes that we're doing in our raised bed, our little kiddie pool raised bed. Now these are things I would like to plant this spring, but I do not have a spot for them right now. If I can come up with a spot that is workable, then I will get them put in as many of them as I can, but at the moment I just, I can't find somewhere to put them and I can't spend a ton of time on the spring garden because the summer garden is going to require a lot of work this year, like a lot. So these are kind of honorable mentions, like they were on the list but didn't quite make the cut yet. So these beets, I again don't know how to say these, it's Chogya, Chogya, I'm not sure. They're beautiful, they look beautiful, like oh my goodness, like isn't that gorgeous? I would love to grow these. Um, they may have to sneak into a fall garden somewhere, I don't know if I'm going to find a spot for them this spring, but I would love to grow these, they look gorgeous. This Yellow Heart Winter Choi also looks gorgeous. I would really love to try this one. This one I specifically purchased to sow in the fall and my fall garden got pushed back. I just didn't get stuff in soon enough and so I didn't get to try this, this this last winter. So I'm really hoping we can grow some this spring. If not, then I will definitely be putting this in our fall garden. This we have grown before. This is strawberry cabbage lettuce. This lettuce is gorgeous. It is gorgeous, one of my very favorite lettuces visually. It's just beautiful. The, the lettuce is delicate and light. It's just fantastic. It does not do well in any heat. We grew these in cold frames in Idaho and as soon as it started to get hot out at all, it was very bitter. So definitely only a cool weather crop in my opinion, but it's gorgeous. It grew really well. You had these big, beautiful heads of it. It was fantastic. So I'd really like to find somewhere to put this too. This is Benny Hushi, Hushi, Mizuna. It's beautiful. It grows on these, these edible, kind of purpley red stalks with some greens at the top. I had some of this coming up this fall and we had, a, we had a freeze that came through that I didn't realize was coming that quickly and it just wiped them out. But I did get to try some of the babies when they were still growing. It's delicious. So I'd love to find a spot for this if I can squeeze them in somewhere. 
I have never grown cauliflower ever. Growing up, I think my dad grew broccoli one year, but we really didn't do cauliflower. And this is Purple of Sicily. It looks gorgeous. It's so beautiful. Like, I like white cauliflower, but can you imagine purple cauliflower? It looks gorgeous, though. I'd love to find a spot to get this in. I feel like this one has a longer um, growing season, and it's a little more temperamental from what I've, I've researched about it. So I'm a little bit hesitant because I've got so much going on um, outsideways this year. But I might still try to do a little bit of it just to see. And then last but not least are Kelvinon Wonder Peas. These are a super early dwarf variety. The package has been through a lot. We grew some of these in pots in Idaho. These little peas are delicious. They are so sweet and crunchy. They are so, so, so good. My kids love these. I'd really like to grow some more. And these are amazing. They only get about 18 inches tall. You can grow them in pots. You can grow them in window boxes. You can grow them anywhere. If you have limited garden space, but you want some fresh little sweetness to, to perk you up on a spring day, this is the way to go. These are absolutely delicious. So I may get desperate and just throw some in some pots <laughs> and just have them somewhere the chickens can't get at them because they're that good. They're very, very, very good. So I highly recommend these. So that's it. That's what we are aiming to grow, hopefully, this spring season in our garden. I will keep you updated as we get around to planting things. I know it's coming up quick. It's mid-February, and I feel like it's just starting to zip by, like it's just going, and I'm like, oh my goodness, I've got to get all this dealt with and all this figured out. So I'm excited, I'm a little nervous, I'm trying lots of new stuff this year, and again, our summer garden is going to take a lot of work. So if you guys have any questions, please comment below. If you have tried any of these varieties and you had a good or a bad experience, I'd love to hear about it. And don't forget to check out the description box. I will have all of these linked where you can go get them. I will have my blog post about how we did our little kind of cold frame for lack of a better word and also my blog post on gardening or my video my video on gardening in the shopping sacks if you liked this video please give us a thumbs up and subscribe and we will see you guys later